The Senate will come back to order. The Senate will come back to order. The chair recognizes the Senator from the 56. Mr. President, I move the Senate disagree to the House substitute of Senate Bill 6. Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption? Senate Bill 6 by Senators Albers of the 56 and others, a bill to be intended to act to amend Article 3 of Chapter 5 of Title 28 of the OCGA, leading to fiscal bills generally so as to provide for independent economic analyses to be procured by the Office of Planning and Budget for certain tax benefits upon request by the chairpersons of the House Committees on Ways and Means and the Senate Finance Committee to provide a short title to provide for limits and for other purposes. This completes the order, Mr. President. Would the senator from the 56 like to speak to his motion to disagree? He waves. Senator from the 56 has moved that the Senate disagree to House substitute to Senate Bill 6. Is there objection? The chair hears none, and the Senate has disagreed. Mr. Secretary, uh, we'll go back to the rules calendar. Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption of House Bill 98? House Bill 98 by Representative Lumsden of the 12th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Title 50 of the OCGA relating to state government so as to provide conditions for meetings and public hearings to be held by teleconference in emergency conditions, to provide conditions for certain agency members to participate in non-emergency meetings by teleconference, and for other purposes. The Senate Committee on T Science and Technology recommends that this bill do pass by substitute. Respectfully submitted, Senator Dolezal of the 27th Chairman. Senate Committee on Science and Technology offers the following substitute to House Bill 98. A bill to be entitled an act to amend Title 50 of the OCJ relating to state government so as to provide conditions for meetings and public hearings to be held by teleconference in emergency conditions, to provide for related matters, to provide for an effective date, to repeal conflicting laws, and for other purposes. This completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 27th to present House Bill 98. For what purpose does the senator from the 23rd rise? Uh, Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent to excuse the senator from the 24th. Without objection, the senator from the 24th is excused. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the chamber, House Bill 98 deals with declared states of emergency. During our last emergency, we saw a number of local governments have to shift uh, and embrace technology for meetings. This bill simply states that during those meetings, uh, that they must follow the normal course of action that they would have followed in an in-person meeting. So, for example, if this is a public hearing, they would need to allow public input in the same way that they would if the, uh, if the, sorry, if the local government would have met in person. And that's all this bill does. And, Mr. President, I'm happy to take any questions. You have no questions. Thank you. I yield the will. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against House Bill 98? The chair sees none. The question is on the adoption of the committee substitute. Is there objection to adoption of the committee substitute? Chair hears none, and the committee substitute is adopted. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none, the report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none, the main question is ordered. Questions on the passage of the bill by substitute. All those in favor will vote yay, opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. Have all senators voted? <laughs> Have
Have all senators voted? Got a thumbs up in the hallway. Mr. Secretary, please close the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 43, the nays are 1. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed by substitute. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, please read the caption of House Bill 205. House Bill 205 by Representative Williams of the 148th and others. A bill to be entitled an act to amend Title 33 of the OCJ relating to insurance so as to provide a framework for regulating the offering or issuance of travel insurance in the state to revise and provide for definitions to provide for related matters and for other purposes. And the Senate Committee on Insurance and Labor recommends that this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Burke of the 11th, Chairman. This completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the senator from the 28th to speak to House Bill 205. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, I bring you HB 205. It's the uh, as my friend from the 25th says, it's our annual travel insurance bill. Uh, it does a couple quick things I'll highlight. It clarifies unfair, unfair trade practice laws, creates a uniform product structure, imposes consumer disclosures in addition to standard states insurance laws, specifies calculation and payment of premium taxes in a more uniform way, and uh, basically this uh, gets state law in line with the National Association of Insurance Legislators. That I'll yield for questions. You have no questions. Thank you. If you, uh, if you love people, then you'll vote yes. If you hate people, you'll vote no. So thank you. The senator has yielded the well. Is there any other senator wish to speak for or against House Bill 205? The chair sees none. Is there an ob objection agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there an objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none. The main question is ordered. Questions on the passage of the bill. All those in favor vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. Have all senators voted? Have all senators voted? Mr. Secretary, please close the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 47, the nays are 3. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. What purpose does the senator from the 36th rise? I ask unanimous consent to excuse the senator from the 22nd. 2-2. Two, two. 22nd. Without objection, the senator from the 22nd is excused. Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption to House Bill 268? House Bill 268 by Representative Warkheiser of the 157th and others. A bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 28 of Title 43 of the OCJ relating to occupational therapists so as to revise licensing provisions to enter into an interstate compact known as the Occupational Therapy Licensure Compact 
to authorize the State Board of Occupational Therapy to administer the compact in this state and for other purposes. The Senate Committee on Health and Human Services recommends that this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Watson of the First, Chairman. This completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the Senator from the First to speak to House Bill 268. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm here presenting uh, House Bill 268. Uh, this is the Occupational Therapy Licensure Compact. Uh, we already have a compact relating to uh, physicians, nurses, psychologists, physical therapists. Earlier today, which seems like a million years ago now, uh, we passed uh, House Bill 34 for an oleologist and speech. Uh, so I just uh, wanted to uh, bring us House Bill 268, which is the Occupational Therapy Licensure Compact. This makes it easier from state to state, uh, makes it especially easier for military personnel, uh, and this is the same as the others. Uh, this has already passed uh, the Georgia Occupational Regulation Review Council, like the audiologist one did earlier. Uh, ask for your favorable consideration. Thank you. Any other senator wish to speak for or against House Bill 268? Chair sees none. Is there objection or agree to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? Chair hears none. The main question is ordered. Questions on the passage of the bill? All those in favor vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. Have all senators voted? Have all senators voted? Mr. Secretary, please close the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 50, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption of House Bill 353? House Bill 353 by Representative Jones of the 25th and others, a bill to be entitled Act to amend Article 3 of Chapter 6 of Title 40 of the OCGA, leading to driving on the right side of roadway, overtaking and passing, and following too closely so as to clarify what con constitutes an obstruction for purposes of exceptions to when a vehicle is to drive on the right side of the roadway and for other purposes. The Senate Committee on Public Safety recommends that this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Albers of the 56th Chairman. This completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the senator from the 56th to present House Bill 353. Thank you, Mr. President. This is a very simple bill. Uh, the three-foot law was championed by the senator from the 46th and myself many years ago. This updates that language to spell out for motorists what they do when they pass the cyclists. This allows them uh, and encourages them to get to a whole other lane when available, but also uh, when you are in a slow zone, you can still pass using the three-foot rule. A big question that comes up is, does this permit the driver to cross the yellow line? The answer is yes, if it's safe. This will keep our cyclists safe and our drivers safe, and I urge your, urge your favorable consideration. You have a question. Chair recognizes the senator from the 26th with a question. S senator Yeal. Certainly. Senator, why do you put a $250 fine in it? 
Uh, well, the uh, fine is in place because we have had uh, several people who have lost their lives on Georgia roadways. In fact, the original three-foot law was named after a constituent of mine, Roswell. We brought his wife and his two young children down here to commemorate the loss of their father who was killed. Uh, and every year, uh, we're trying to train folks to make sure that they're doing the right thing. Senator Further, you. Certainly. Don't you think $250 fine is too much when bicyclists get in the street and there is no bicycle lane and they're on the road and they get in the road and then a car is traveling 45 miles an hour and they run up on a bicycle, try to get over, can't get over because it's in the line. It might not be safe to pull over and you gonna give them a $250 fine. Well, Senator, it would be if they went closer than three foot and that's up to, which means there's as anything else judicial discretion, they could make that fine anywhere from $1 up to $250. That's the actual maximum. You have no more questions. Thank you. I urge your favorable consideration to keep our cyclists and our drivers safe on the roads. Any other senator wish to speak for or against House Bill 353? The chair sees none. Is there objection or agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none and the main question is ordered. Questions on the passage of the bill. All those in favor vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. Have all senators voted? Have all senators voted? Ms. Ms. Secretary, please close the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 38, the nays are 12. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Ms. Secretary, can you please read the caption of House Bill 354? House Bill 354 by Representative Williams of the 145th and others. A bill to be entitled an act to amend Title 43 of the OCGA relating to professions and businesses so as to require the State Board of Cer Cemeterians and the State Board of Funeral Service to report suspected unlawful activity to the Sheriff's Office and the Attorney General to require the Attorney General to provide notice of such suspected unlawful activity to the appropriate prosecuting attorney and for other purposes. The Senate Committee on Special Judiciary recommends that this bill do pass by substitute. Respectfully submitted, Senator Jordan of the Sixth, Chairman. The Senate Committee on Special Judiciary offers the following substitute to House Bill 354. A bill to be entitled an act to amend Titles 10 and 43 of the OCGA relating to commerce and trade and professions and businesses, respectively, so as to change certain provisions related to the authority of the State Board of Funeral Service and the State Board of Cemeterians, and for other purposes. This completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the senator from the 23rd to speak to House Bill 354. Thank you, Mr. President. This is a straightforward consumer protection bill. It allows the State Board of Funeral Services and the State Board of uh, Cemeterians to address problems with bad actors. It uh, allows them to, uh, requires that they refer this to uh, the Attorney General and uh, the Sheriff within seven days. They do an investigation, they do a referral, and then the Attorney General uh, takes action within 60 days. Uh, if I have no questions, I'll yield away. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 28th with a question. Uh-oh. Senator, do you yield? Regrettably, Senator, I yield. Would this be your second bill in the well? Yeah, yes, but this is the straightforward, easy one, Senator, so I would uh, appreciate your support. You might have it. I'm going to read it. It, uh, it won't take long. 
it's a fairly brief bill. Well, I'm just pointing out the fact that this is his first bill that he can be, he's fair game. Is that not true? <laughs> that is fair game. True. True, Senator. You have no more questions. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I yield the well. Any other senator wish to speak for or against House Bill 354? Chair sees none. The question is on the adoption of the committee substitute. Is there objection to adoption of the committee substitute? Chair hears none, and the committee substitute is adopted. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which is favorable to the pass of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none. The main question is ordered. Questions on the passage of the bill by substitute. All those in favor vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. Have all senators voted? Have all senators voted? Ms. Secretary, please close the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 51, the nays are zero. This bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed by substitute. For what purpose does the senator from the 21st rise? Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent to excuse the senator from the 23rd for business inside the Capitol. Without objection, the senator from the 23rd is excused. Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption of House Bill 363? House Bill 363 by Representatives LaHood of the 175th and others. A bill to be entitled in the act to amend Title 16 of the OCGA relating to crimes and offenses so as to revise definitions relative to the protection of elder persons, to remove enhanced penalties for certain offenses against persons 65 years of age or older, and for other purposes. The Senate Committee on Judiciary recommends that this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Strickland of the 17th. Chairman. Senators Jordan of the Six and others offer the following Amendment 1 to amend House Bill 363 by inserting a new Section 6 at line 57 that will amend Code Section 16-6-5.1 of the OCGA relating to improper sexual contact by employee, again, agent, or foster parent, consent, not a defense, and penalty is amended by revising paragraph of and for other purposes. Senator Sheridan of the Six and others offer the following Amendment 2 to amend House Bill 363 by inserting on line 5 after purposes the following, and to amend Title 16 relating to crimes and offenses so as to revise the offense of improper sexual contact by employee, agent, or foster parent to revise and provide for definitions and for other purposes. This completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 17th to speak to House Bill 363. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the Senate, I bring to you House Bill 363. This bill is in response to a core appeals decision last year dealing with what we call the rule of lenity, um, where you have multiple crimes that have different levels of punishment, but the facts of the case could fit those different crimes. As a result, when you try to prosecute one of those offenses um, without looking at all of them, the court can toss the whole prosecution out. All that to say, all we did with this bill, uh, with this House bill, is strike some code sections dealing with elder abuse in our state to make sure we have enforceable laws that we can prosecute these crimes on. There's also an amendment that the Senator from the Six is gonna speak on. She has some whiteboards she prepared to review this. I had to have some fun with you. There was a bill in our committee that was also in the same title that's also in response to a core appeals decision from last year. She's gonna address the amendment. I support the amendment. I'd love to get both these issues done. And with that, Mr. President, I'm happy to answer any questions. You have no questions. Thank you. I ask for your support of the bill and the amendment. 
Chair recognizes the Senator from the 6th to speak to both Amendments 1 and 2. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Amendment 2 is really the one I'm going to speak to. Amendment 1 has the same information, but I needed to make sure that it was correct. Um, in terms of what this does, this comes from a Court of Appeals decision called Bully versus State. Um, in that decision, a criminal defendant appealed his conviction on multiple counts of rape. Um, and specifically, he was in convicted of five counts of sexual assault on a probationer. Um, and basically, this um, gentleman, a guy named Jeffrey Bully, owned and operated an inpatient drug rehabilitation facility. In Georgia, like y'all know, those convicted of drug crimes are often required to complete a drug rehab program as a condition of their probation. Bully provided one such program. Um, he then routinely made sexual advances toward the probationers that were there per court order, um, repeatedly threatened to expel them or report probation violations unless the female probationers would have sex with him. Eventually, it was discovered there was an investigation, there was a criminal prosecution um, for crimes against seven victims. Um, there was a lot of evidence and he was convicted um, after trial. It goes up to the Court of Appeals and there's a very specific statute on point, which is what we're trying um, to, to fix right now, um, that he was convicted under, specifically because of the probationers and his status as someone that was offering services to them. Um, the Court of Appeals and the majority opinion found that the way that the statute they, it had to be strictly construed, and um, Bully did not fall under this particular statute. Um, but they strongly believed that he should have um, because he used his power, he coerced these women, all because he was in a position because they were there per court order um, as a condition of their probation. Uh, so really this is just to make sure that if someone in Mr. Bully's position um, who is basically offering services that are required to the state to probationers if they sexually assault and rape the probationers then they can be held accountable um, for that criminal conduct and um, this was requested by some members of the Court of Appeals um, specifically because they were um, concerned um, about the fact that this did not apply to this particular situation. I'll yield the well. Senator has yielded the well. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the measure or the amendments? The chair sees none. The chair recognizes the senator from the sixth. Senator from the sixth has asked for amendment number one to be withdrawn. Is there objection? Chair hears none and amendment number one is withdrawn. We'll now take up amendment number two. Senator from the 6th has offered amendment number 2. Is there objection to the adoption of amendment number 2? Chair hears none, and amendment number 2 is adopted. Is there objection to agreeing the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none, the report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none, and the main question is ordered. Questions on the passage of the bill as amended. All those in favor vote yay. Oppose nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. Have all senators voted? Now they have. Mr. Secretary, please close the machine.
on the passage of the bill. The yeas are 47, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the records of the constitutional majority, is therefore passed as amended. Ms. Secretary, can you please read the caption? House Resolution 119. House Resolution 119 by Representative Ralston of the 7th and others. A resolution recognizing United States Senator Johnny Isaacson and dedicating a bridge in his honor and for other purposes. The Senate Committee on Transportation recommends that this resolution do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Ginn of the 47th, Chairman. This completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 53rd to present Senate House Resolution 119. Thank you, Mr. President. It's a glorious day to be with you today. The thunderstorm's moving in, and I have a little thunder myself. You know, being in this chamber, it's a remarkable thing. You have great friends, people you, you love, you work with, they're good people. But then you have some people that let you down, that do you dirty in politics and in this room, but not people like Johnny Isaacson. Johnny Isaacson is, was a great leader. We work with him on both sides of the aisle. You can count on him. You can depend on him. <clears throat> he was born in Atlanta, December 28, 1944, married to Diane Isaacson. They have three children. He attended the University of Georgia, served in the United States Air Force with the rank of Staff Sergeant. He was in the Georgia Air National Guard Unit. He opened the first Cobb County office of the Northside Realty. He became the president of that organization in 1979, held that post for 22 years, and during that time became the largest independent realtor, real estate uh, company in the southeastern United States. Johnny Isaacson worked greatly to, in helping people in Georgia no matter who you are, no matter what side of the aisle you came from, no matter what side of the tracks you came from, Johnny Isaacson was a man about the people, take care of people, taking care of our state. Johnny also worked to uh, help expand the Ports Authority in the state of Georgia, help getting the millions, tens of millions of dollars of helping dredge the ports, helping the roads, and in fact, helping with the rails capacity in the port of Savannah which today, the Ports of Savannah, is the number one fastest growing port in the United States, the second largest on the eastern seaboard, and we have many people, even in this room, to thank, but also Johnny Isaacson. He is a member of the Georgia House, the member of the State Senate. He was a Georgia school board member, and I think maybe the chair that was appointed by Zell Miller after they ran against each other. That's the kind of person he was thought to be and well deserved to be. United States House Representative, the United States Senate, our friend Johnny Isaacson. There are three things I'll say about Johnny Isaacson. I had to get my fingers working. He was a great man. He was a man that made things happen. A lot of things in Washington doesn't work like, like that anymore. And the third thing, he was our friend. I appreciate your vote on this issue. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator has yielded the well. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against House Resolution 119? The chair sees none. Is there objection to agreeing the report of the committee which is favorable to the adoption of the resolution? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none and the main question is ordered. Questions on the adoption of the resolution. All those in favor vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. Have all senators voted? Mr. Secretary, please close the machine. On the adoption of the resolution, the yeas are 47, the nays are zero. This resolution, having received the requisite constitu constitutional majority, is therefore adopted. Good work, Senator.
Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption of House Bill 370? House Bill 370 by Representative Jones of the 47th and others. A bill to be entitled an act to amend Article 4 of Chapter 7 of Title 31 of the OCGA relating to county and municipal hospital authorities so as to provide for term limits for members of joint hospital authorities to provide that joint hospital authorities that least certain hospitals are subject to limitations on utilization of revenues and for other purposes. The Senate Committee on Health and Human Services recommends that this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Watson of the first chairman. Senator Jackson of the second and others offers the following amendment one to amend House Bill 370 by deleting on line 30, including any partial term and for other purposes. This completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 32nd to present House Bill 370. Thank you, Mr. President. I think everybody in this room knows the incredible role that Grady Hospital plays in our state and especially in the metro area. And you may not know that I was a volunteer clinical hand surgery instructor there for 25 years, so Grady means a lot to me. This bill clarifies the Fulton DeKalb Hospital Authority's current restrictions on how it can spend the $3 million in yearly lease payments it receives from Grady Hospital. This bill will result in approximately half the lease payment revenues, or about $1.5 million, flowing back to Grady Hospital every year to pay towards ex existing pension obligations, indigent care, and an expansion of Crestview Nursing Home. Currently, very little of the lease payment revenues are returned back to Grady. The bill also puts authority board term limits in place similar to the Grady's corporate board limits and a number of other hospital authorities in the state. This bill was requested by current and past authority members and corporate board members. It will not result in any current authority board members having to leave the board until the end of their terms. Uh, there is an amendment that I worked with with my friend from the second and uh, all the amendment does is, in, is delete the words on line 30, including any partial term, which just makes it much more clear. And uh, I would urge your support for the bill. I'll be happy to answer any questions. You have no questions. Thank you. I yield the will. Chair recognizes the senator from the second to speak to the amendment number one. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, I urge uh, your support for the bill. The senator from the 32nd uh, came up with It's a very good bill. It's, it's good for uh, the Fulton County uh, DeKalb Hospital Authority. The amendment just clears it up a little bit. I support the amendment. I, I support the bill and urge you all to also support the amendment. Thank you very much. I yield the will. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against House Bill 370 or amendment number one? The chair sees none. We'll take up amendment number one first. The senator, is there objection to adoption of amendment number one by the senator from the second? The chair hears none and amendment number one is adopted. Is there objection to agreeing the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none, the report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none and the main question is ordered. Questions on the passage of the bill as amended. All those in favor vote yay, opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. Have all senators voted?
Mr. Secretary, have all senators voted? Mr. Secretary, please close the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 46, the nays are 2. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed as amended. Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption of House Bill 453? House Bill 453 by Representative McDonald of the 26 and others. A bill to be entitled an act to amend code section 40-2-86 of the OCGA relating to special license plates promoting or supporting certain worthy agencies, funds, or nonprofit corporations and qualified motor vehicles or drivers with proceeds deposited into the general fund and for other purposes. The Senate Committee on Public Safety recommends that this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Albers of the 56th Chairman. This completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 56th to present House Bill 453. Thank you, Mr. President. I know the great support this chamber has given to our firefighters across this state over the years. This will be one more opportunity for us to do that. Many of us in the fire service are very proud to have a tag for our automobile uh, that has firefighter on that. However, almost everyone that I know who's a firefighter has a second or even a third job. Many of those jobs happen to be their own businesses. And with that, they are, uh, have an LLC or other type of a company, and they will have either a truck or a car or a van that needs a commercial tag. This will simply allow them to have the same firefighter tag for commercial as well as a traditional tag. If there are no questions, I will ask your favorable consideration and yield the will. You have no questions. Any other senator wish to speak for or against House Bill 453? Chair sees none. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none and the main question is ordered. Questions on the passage of the bill. All those in favor vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. Have all senators voted? You almost took out the senator from the 32nd. Mr. Secretary, please close the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 49, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Chair recognizes the majority leader. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that the rules be suspended to allow for first reading and reference of local House bills. The majority leader has asked for unanimous consent for the rules to be suspended to allow for first reading and reference of local House bills. Is there objection? The chair hears none, and we will proceed. Mr. Secretary, will you please read the local bills? House Bill 709 by Representatives LaRicia of the 169th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act providing that governing authority of each county comprising State and local government. House Bill 744 by Representatives Annualwitz of the 42nd and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act creating a new charter for the city of Smyrna, approved August State and local government. House Bill 762 by Representatives Maynard of the 56th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to create the Fulton Technology and Energy Enhancement Authority to provide State a State and local government. House Bill 771 by Representatives Thomas of the 39th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act providing a new charter for the city of Austell, approved March 28th. State and local government. House Bill 778 by Representatives Hill of the 3rd and others, a bill to be entitled an act to authorize the city of Ringgold, Georgia, Texas, has all redevelopment. And State and local government. 
House Bill 790 by Representatives Cameron of the First and others, a bill to be entitled an act to create the city of Chickamauga Public Facilities Authority to provide for severability State to State and local government. House Bill 791 by Representatives Wilkerson of the 38th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act creating a new charter for the city of Powder Springs, approved March 3rd. State and local government. House Bill 792 by Representatives Meeks of the 178th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to create and establish the Wayne County, Altahoma River and Leisure Services State Authority. State and local government. House Bill 793 by Representatives Meeks of the 178th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to create and establish the Wayne County Public Facilities Authority to provide for several. State and local government. House Bill 794 by Representatives Howard of the 100. 24th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act regulating public instruction for State the and local government. House Bill 795 by Representative Jackson of the 128th, a bill to be entitled an act to repeal an act providing for a supplement to the compensation of judge of the probate State court. State and local government. House Bill 796 by Representative Gaines of the 117th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act creating the classic center authority for State and local government. House Bill 799 by Representative Strenner of the 85th and others. A bill to be entitled an act to repeal an act to create the Clarkston Development Authority. State and local government. House Bill 800 by Representatives Perkle of the 155th. A bill to be entitled an act to authorize the assessment and collection of a technology fee by the probate court. State of and local government. House Bill 801 by Representatives Irwin of the 28th. A bill to be entitled an act to reconstitute and reestablish the Board of Registrations and Elections of for Stevens County, Georgia to provide. State and local government. House Bill 802 by Representatives Irwin of the 28th. A bill to be entitled an act to amend an act to provide for a Stevens County Board of Registrations and Elections approved March 30th. State and local government. House Bill 803 by Representatives Ralston of the 7th. A bill to be entitled an act to authorize the assessment and collection of a technology fee by the Magistrate Court of State and local government. House Bill 804 by Representatives Leverett of the 33rd. A bill to be entitled an act to provide a new charter State for and local government. This completes the order, Mr. President. All right, we're going to go back onto the rules calendar. Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption of House Bill 459? House Bill 459 by Representatives Martin of the 49th and others. A bill to be entitled an act to amend Article 5 of Chapter 36 of Title 36 of the OCJ relating to limitation of annexation of areas furnished services or included in comprehensive zoning plan by certain counties so as to prohibit annexations of county operated airport property and for other purposes. The Senate Committee on State and Local Government recommends that this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Anderson of the 24th, Chairman. This completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 56th to present House Bill 459. Thank you, Mr. President. House Bill 459 involves Charlie Brown Airport. Fulton County has made significant investments in the airport, and this is to assure because the airport relies right in the middle between the city of South Fulton and Atlanta, that neither uh, would annex that in a way that would be inconsistent with the investments that Fulton County had made. So in working with both of those cities, this bill simply says that both the county and the city would have to adopt the resolution in order to impact that. Now, that may never happen, but this will make sure it preserves one of our smaller and very successful airports, and I want to thank each one of the cities for working together in this and a good bipartisan manner. Thank you, Mr. President. There are no questions. I will yield the will. You have no questions. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against House Bill 459? The chair sees none. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none, and the main question is ordered. Questions on the passage of the bill? All those in favor vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. Have all senators voted? Have all senators voted?
Mr. Secretary, please close the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 49, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption of House Bill 465? House Bill 465 by Representatives Golden for the 19th and others. A bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 60 of Title 36 of the OCGA relating to general provisions applicable to counties and municipal corporations so as to prohibit local governments from imposing civil penalties upon a line systems contractor and for other purposes. The Senate Committee on Rules recommends that this bill do pass by substitute. Respectfully submitted, Senator Mullis of the 53rd Chairman. The Senate Committee on Rules offers the following substitute to House Bill 465. A bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 60 of Title 36 of the OCJ relating to general provisions applicable to counties and municipal corporations so as to prohibit local governments from imposing civil penalties upon alarm system contractor for a false alarm and for other purposes. This completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 53rd to present the measure. He waves to the senator from the 29th. The chair recognizes the senator from the 29th. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, House Bill 465 is just a common sense uh, pro-business piece of legislation. It, uh, all it does is clarify that if a, a burglar alarm or any kind of alarm system uh, is installed and the false alarm is because of the installation, then the responsibility of any fines or fees because of the false alarm to the municipality belongs to the company that installed it. But if uh, it's because of the owner of the alarm not setting the alarm properly or uh, accidentally setting the false alarm off, then the responsibility of fines and fees would be on the owner of the alarm and not on the manufacturer or uh, installer. If there's not any questions, Mr. President, I'll yield the well. You have a question. Chair recognizes the senator from the 20th with a question. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, would the senator yield? Yes, sir. This does not mandate local governments fine homeowners for false alarms. It, it just directs who would be responsible if the local government decided to levy a fine, is that correct? The senator from the 20th knows of which he speaks, yes sir. Thank you. Yes sir. You have no more questions. Thank you Mr. President. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against House Bill 465? The chair sees none. The question is on the adoption of the committee substitute. Is there objection or adoption of the committee substitute? Chair hears none and the committee substitute is adopted. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the pass of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none. The main question is ordered. Questions on the passage of the bill by substitute. All those in favor vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. Have all senators voted? Have all senators voted? Mr. Secretary, please close the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 41, the nays are 7. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed by substitute. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption of House Bill 553? 
House Bill 553 by Representatives Gunter of the 8th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 13 of Title 50 of the OCJ relating to administrative procedures so as to provide for participation in hearings by electronic communications, to provide for electronic filing of documents, to provide for electronic service, and for other purposes. The Senate Committee on Judiciary recommends that this bill do pass by substitute. Respectfully submitted, Senator Strickland of the 17th, Chairman. Senate Judiciary offers the following substitute to House Bill 553, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 13 of Title 50 of the OCJ relating to administrative procedures so as to provide for participation in hearings by electronic communications, to provide for electronic filing of documents, to provide for electronic service, and for other purposes. This completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the really busy freshman, Senator from the 50th, to present another bill. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Today I rise to bring House Bill 553. <clears throat> this bill provides that in contested cases under the Georgia Administrative Procedure Act, a hearing may be conducted using electronic communication if all parties consent. It also provides that in, uh, in the administrative law judge discretion, one or more witnesses may participate by remote electronic communications provides that the Office of the State Administrative Hearings may require electronic filing of documents, and it adds the Department of Community Health to the definition of reviewing agency in Code Section 50-13-41. This is a good bill that will help with judicial economy, and if there are no questions, I will yield the well. You have no questions. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Any other senator wish to speak for or against House Bill 553? The chair sees none. The question is on the adoption of the committee substitute. Is there objection to adoption of the committee substitute? Chair hears none, and the committee substitute is adopted. Is there objection to agree in the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none, and the main question is ordered. Questions on the passage of the bill by substitute. All those in favor vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. Have all senators voted? Have all senators voted? We've got a thumbs up in the hallway. Mr. Secretary, please close the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 48, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed by substitute. <laughs> Chair recognizes the senator from the 40th for a motion. Mr. President, I move that the Senate agree to the House substitute for Senate Bill 294. Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption? Senate Bill 294 by Senator Harold the 40th, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act creating a new charter for the city of Chambly, approved March 28, 1935, as amended, so as to change the election districts to provide for four council districts and one at-large district to provide for terms of office and for other purposes. The House offers the following substitute to Senate Bill 294, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act creating a new ch charter for the city of Chambly, approved March 28, 1935, as amended so as to change the election districts 
to provide for four council districts and one at-large district and for other purposes. This completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 40th to speak to her motion. Thank you, Mr. President. Senate Bill 294 is a local bill for the city of Chambly. It simply adds a city council district due to the fact that the city has had a number of annexations and is now a larger city. Um, there was some technical language left off the bill when we passed it in the Senate that attached the uh, map language to it, so we fixed that in the House, and so it's coming back, and I ask you to uh, vote in agreement to the changes the House made. Thank you, Mr. President. You have no questions. The senator has yielded the well. Any other senator wish to speak for or against the motion? Going once. All right, the senator from the 40th has moved that the Senate agree to the House substitute to Senate Bill 294. All those in favor vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. Have all senators voted? Have all senators voted? Always clear. Mr. Secretary, will you please close the machine? On the motion, the yeas are 48, the nays are zero, and the Senate has agreed to the House substitute to Senate Bill 294. The chair recognizes the majority leader for a motion. Mr. President, I move that the Senate stand adjourned until 10 a.m. on Monday, 29 March, 2021. Mr. Secretary, please give us your announcements. The Rules Committee will meet tomorrow, March 26 at 10 a.m. in room 450. This completes the order, Mr. President. Does any senator wish to make an announcement? Before we get out of here, oh, this chair recognizes the rules chairman. Thank you, Mr. President. Just want to let you know, hey, we're meeting on Friday, but you never knew what time this would end tonight. However, we're going to feed you if you come. We're going to have... Mary Mac type food, but it's going to be Oakwood Cafe that Casey Carpenter owns across the hall. It's going to be good food like fried chicken, uh, macaroni and cheese. I'm not going to give it to you. Uh, collard greens. It's going to be good southern food. So please, if you're here tomorrow, we're going to feed you at noonish. So thank you, and I'll see members at 10 a.m. I've never heard somebody describe lunch like that before. That was pretty good. All right, before we leave, make sure just uh, I know we had a lot of severe weather and a lot of our districts uh, hopes and prayers are for the folks back home and uh, look forward to, uh, to everybody being safe on their travels back. The majority leader has moved that the Senate stand adjourned until Monday, March 28, 2021 at 10 a.m. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, no. no. And the ayes absolutely have it. The Senate stands adjourned.